Hey guys, welcome back to another video. So warning right off the bat, after this video, there are going to be a lot of choice words probably in the comments and a lot of opinions, but this is a channel where we talk about data and experiences. And unfortunately in this industry, we have two parties, brokers and carriers that don't really agree with each other. So all of you guys probably already know the issue with TQL and how they got caught taking like 44% of the load and how it made a lot of people livid in terms of broker transparency and how much brokers actually make off of each load. So I decided to do some digging and well, ready? Let's go. So a few days ago, I came across an article from Overdrive and it was titled FMCSA investigates TQL as fight over broker transparency rages. And I'm going to attach everything I talk about down below. Obviously this article recounts the issue with TQL. And by the way, for those of you who did not know, the FMCSA denied raiding TQL's office. And I quote, in this particular case, the agency received a complaint and conducted a virtual investigation, which did not involved an on-site visit to review the claims raised by the complainant. And this was said by the FMCSA. Now, further in the article, it is argued that while yes, absolutely, there are some instances where brokers rack up huge margins on select loads for the most part. And again, I quote, the average broker margin in this industry goes up and down a little bit with the market, but it's anywhere between 13 and 18%. Now, me being well, me, I got really, really pissed off reading this because I know for a fact, since we're in the flatbed sector and with flatbeds, the shippers are often very, very tiny. And the shipper, the actual shipper is the one loading your truck or the shipper and their family members. We have picked up so many loads from Missouri where the shipper was Amish and it was a whole family that was actually loading the truck. And those guys, they talk. And you very quickly realize from these conversations that these brokers brokers are taking 30, 40, 50% of the load because the shipper claims they paid $3,000 for a load and you're hauling it for $1,600 from the broker. Obviously, it makes my blood boil and it actually makes the shipper's blood boil as well. But I digress. Again, back to this article. Ken Adamo, I hope I'm pronouncing his name correctly. He's the DAT chief of analytics. He mentioned something very interesting. He said, Publicly traded brokers like C.H. Robinson, J.B. Hunt, RxO, and others all publish quarterly information on their margins for their shareholders. Any dishonesty there would be punishable by the Securities and Exchange Commission and a disaster for the business. So me being me, of course, I started digging and yep, those financials or some of them are pretty detailed. Now, of course, there are going to be some people who are going to say these are cooked numbers, but we won't be 100% certain until broker transparency becomes commonplace. So for now, Let's just take a look at what kind of margins these huge brokers we all know are reporting. So JB Hunt on quarter three of 2023. Now the brokerage department is called the integrated capacity solutions. Now they have a bunch of charts. I'm going to move over here so I can attach the chart here. We're going to focus on the gross profit margins. And for quarter three of this year, as you can see, the profit margin is 12.8% down from 14.2% last year. So basically JB Hunt is reporting that off of each broker load, they're keeping about 12.8% in their pocket. Moving on to RxO, gross margins for the brokerage side from 19.6% in quarter three of last year to 17.7% in quarter three of this year. Now I did look at Landstar, but their financials are all screwed up and they're mixing in their leased on owner operators with those outside carriers. So their margins are screwed up. So I'm skipping over them. Uber Freight also has no margins at all. Percentage wise, they just have dollar amounts, which tells us nothing at all. But then we have Knight Swift, which acquired US Express. And here we go. Here's another chart. And we can see that last year, their gross margin was at 21%. Now it's 18%. 
All the others like C.H. Robinson, Echo Global, Werner Enterprises, and so on. I'm sorry to say, I'm just, I guess I'm not that smart. I could not decipher them. I couldn't figure out what pertains to their own fleet versus outside carriers. Now, as we just saw, none of these margins are showing that 30, 40, 50% mark. So the question now is, are we wrong in blaming brokers for all of our hardships? Well, yes and no. It would be unwise to put all brokers in one basket and assume that every single broker takes off up to 50% every single time off of every single load they move. But, and this is a big one, there are certain brokers who do abuse their power. And again, as a reminder, we're primarily a flatbed carrier at this point, and we talk to shippers pretty much every single day. But if you want more proof and you don't want to take my word for it, I'm going to attach a video down below that was sent to me in the comments for a previous video that I made. But here is a screenshot of what the gentleman shows in the video. So basically here, the shipper accidentally gave the driver the printout of the email chain between the shipper and the broker. And in it, it was disclosed how much the shipper is paying. So we can see here that he's paying $2.84 per mile and on top of it, an additional $774.81 for fuel which the driver did not even get. The broker pocketed all of it. The driver got paid $1,700 on this load from the broker. And the broker took over 50% plus the fuel surcharge. So now my question is, when these publicly traded companies are calculating their margins, are they including that fuel surcharge that they're pocketing or are they hiding that number somewhere else? Because what happened in this video that I just talked about, that is pure theft. And we all know from experience that tonu detention Lumber fees even sometimes do not get paid to the driver or reimbursed to the driver, even though oftentimes the broker actually gets paid by the shipper. So yeah, broker transparency is something that I'm 100% behind. Like I said before, if I am getting paid what I need to be paid, I don't give a flying f what you're making. But if you are sitting in an office in your comfy chair in front of your computer and stealing fuel surcharge from my drivers who oh, you know, actually have to pay for fuel to move your load. I want to know who you are. Anyway, guys, I hope this was helpful. I hope I didn't vent too much. There's a ton of reading material attached down below for those who are interested. Stay strong, folks. Stay as level-headed as humanly possible in these strange times. Wishing you all a fantastic rest of your day, and I'll see you in the next video.